thank you jesus for your marvelous presence in the midst of your people we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words impart they are ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open up oh let the ancient words i have come with open hearts Oh, let the ancient words Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus that tonight will indeed be one night that we will not forget in a hurry. We thank you for what you are already doing in our lives. This is what we get for trusting you enough to come before you with hearts broken hearts humbled hearts expectant we pray in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god that no one here and no one following no one connecting by faith will leave disappointed tonight and we vow that whilst you transform whilst you heal whilst you deliver we decree and declare that through our transformations through our healings through our deliverances through the diverse manifestations of your presence jesus and him alone will be enthroned revealed and glorified even in our midst for in jesus name we pray god bless you please be seated please be seated god bless you it's good to have everyone around um, this does not always happen but let me teach you something never frown at moments like this where god just decides to move in the midst of his people and where you have the opportunity to soak in the glory it, it will not happen for every service but if and when it happens do not fight it there is something god is doing it's good to be excellent it's good to display a high level of leadership but you must have the flexibility that when he comes and in whatever manner he comes you must be able to receive him when we become excessively rigid over the activity of the holy spirit many times we lose out you see the way the holy spirit works just play strings for me thank you the way the holy spirit works is that when he comes into a place just help those under the anointing it is the honor that you give him through your patience through your discernment through the manifestation of faith that makes for the continuation of what he is doing just because he has come does not mean he will bless you where your resistance stops him is where he will honorably stop is why many people never dive into the deeper dimensions of the things of the spirit because sometimes we are too calculated. bible and even in modern history there were times they would just come and soak in that glory and not even know the name of what they are doing but when he's done you will find out that the infirmities are no longer there you will find out that the limitations are no longer there can i tell you this when you spend one hour of quality time in his presence it can give you 10 years of another man's desire his presence has value always are we together so don't you think this is just some pentecostal thing or charismatic thing not at all 
this is the spirit of god responding to the hunger responding to the desire responding to the passion of god's people in every assembly in every ministry in every gathering like this there will always be people who are not serious with god there will always be people who do not think god is a big deal but i can assure you there are always people who come before about the things of the spirit it is for such people for their sake god will not leave himself without a witness are we together it is impossible to take god seriously and these kinds of moments will not happen in your church in your life in your family on what you understand your pace will be too slow there are many times god will walk with you is three years later that you will understand what he did three years before it's an act of faith to trust him and go all the way and let your mind catch up sometimes we become too scientific and philosophical in our walk with god we want to understand the details of what god is doing except that sometimes his ways are past finding out you can stretch your intelligence and yet not understand what god is doing hallelujah praise the name of the lord i welcome everyone in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god and um I particularly want to appreciate and honor all those who have traveled from outside of this nation um, I do this not for the ritual but just because sometimes um, my, my heart really goes out to the many people who travel from all across the globe not for a special convention for the services every week and um, it takes a lot to travel from across Africa, from across the globe. People come, churches send their delegates, their pastors. We have people come from everywhere. It is impossible for you to just decide that you will get up and leave your nation and come to another place when you can pick up your phone and follow. You see that? It means that there is something there for you that God is sending you to receive. Is that true and so i sincerely want to appreciate them i may not have the time a miracle service is next week and usually would we'll take that time to honor them but just just to aside from um dear men of god that i would, I would appreciate shortly i want to appreciate if you are here uh, whether here or in the overflow and you came from outside nigeria please stand just for us to honor you please stand wherever you are let's celebrate them let's celebrate them inside all of the overflows outside god bless you and those who are connecting from outside of this place we love you we sincerely appreciate you in the name of jesus christ where are the delegates from canada are they here the pastor who came with delegates from canada please find out let me know let me be sure that um okay they are yet to arrive okay that's fine praise god i know a pastor and i mean some delegates a number of them all the way from canada you know ju they just indicated that they were on their way coming just to come and fellowship and to contact this grace you see when when god begins to honor and help you like this two things very quickly one beware of pride there is absolutely nothing in us outside of the mercy and the help of god and then number two you must be able to take the love and the commitment of god's people as a trust that you must not betray you must make sure they do not spend so much resources time energy and then come to your assembly and then you waste their time and share the grace it is very unfair in fact it is evil it is my covenant with god that no one no one would ever come for any service regardless what service and then go back the same now so thank you so much for making the time to come may the lord bless you i pray that your coming will be most profitable for you you have our blessings and you have our prayers in jesus name amen and amen let me honor and celebrate please be seated thank you let me honor and celebrate two great 
um, men of God in our midst. One is a dear friend and brother, Reverend Dr. Paul Mbwagbo, all the way from Cameroon. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you, sir. It was his church and, uh, that hosted me in Cameroon last year. It was such a phenomenal time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then we have another great, wonderful man of God all the way from Cote d'Ivoire, Reverend Ralph Wafo. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you, sir, in the name of Jesus Christ. And for every minister of the gospel here, doesn't matter whether you are in the main auditorium or outside, the Lord bless you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, give me an encounter tonight in the name of Jesus. Please lift your voice and pray. Give me an encounter even by your spirit. Give me an encounter by your spirit that will change my life forever. In Jesus name I pray. Hallelujah. Commanding the supernatural part two. We are wrapping up a series that we started last week on the supernatural helping believers to understand the necessity for walking in the supernatural and the demands what it takes to command the supernatural part one we looked at the dynamics of faith as the first key to releasing the supernatural and then for tonight part two we're going to be looking at engaging the anointing please pay attention let your spirit be open i'll be teaching us on the dynamics of the anointing so we agreed last week that when it has to do with commanding the supernatural it is an interplay between faith and the anointing that there is a role that faith has to play as far as commanding the supernatural is concerned and there is a role that the anointing has to play um, for a very long time in the body of christ it seems as though there's been a great divide and even confusion as to how these spiritual forces operate in producing miracles and the manifestation of the supernatural on one hand we have people who are in quote faith people and there is nothing else they are interested in all they know is just faith the moment faith is in place everything is in place then we have especially the charismatics who believe that it is about the anointing it has nothing to do with faith once the power of god is not present doesn't matter what you are speaking doesn't matter what you are saying and for a long time there has been arguments and even misunderstandings across this divide i think i've said it here and i will repeat it again that the dynamics of faith and even engaging the anointing all of these forces were supposed to work together to produce the supernatural there is nowhere in the bible where you are given the liberty to choose whether you want faith or you want the anointing it's like choosing whether you want fuel or you want tires in your car which one do you think is important as far as movement is concerned if you have healthy tires that are alive and you do not have fuel the car will not move but then if you have fuel full tank your gas is your your your, your tank is full and your car does not have tires it will not move also so you can see that they are very very important and my assignment tonight as we wrap up this series is to open up our eyes to understand the how to engage the anointing many believers continue to live defeated lives because they do not understand how faith works we looked at that please do well to get the teachings and then now we are looking at the dynamics or engaging the anointing last week we laid a very important foundation that i want us to not forget how that in this kingdom every time we talk about the supernatural and we talk about results 
you must understand the motivation behind our desire for results please look up it is very important that we put this in place and in perspective when dealing with subjects of the supernatural why do we need results in our lives why do we need to see the manifest power of god in our lives i told us that results are also evangelists that there is a kind of evangelism only results can do is that true there is a sermon that our territory is waiting for and the preacher is not a human vessel the preacher is the testimony the results the workings of the power of god that we are not the only ones who are preaching that our results can also preach is that true and when we do not produce results we stop our territories from hearing the message that can save them results are very important john 15 and verse 8 jesus himself was teaching and he said hearing is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples when you read verse 16 of the same scripture 16 he said you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain it is important for believers to command results it is important that our our Christian adventures produce fruits and results that compel all and sundry to know that number one Jesus is alive and number two that he is dependable I would always say this especially during the miracle services that um, every time you receive a miracle you receive a testimony from God you must understand that every testimony comes with a letter from God to you three things captured in that letter number one the message of love in every manifestation of the supernatural jesus through it is saying i love you i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness number two in every miracle and every manifestation of the supernatural please pay attention jesus is saying through it that i am dependable god is dependable that means you can know you are safe trusting him and then number three when miracles and supernatural occurrences happen written in that letter is i am almighty you have to discern the supernatural every time you receive a testimony every time things begin to work for you don't just enjoy the miracles don't just enjoy the manifestations you must discern what God through those things is saying to you number one the message of love number two a charge that God can be trusted and then number three that he is almighty reminding you again that he is not just mighty he is almighty we looked at the dynamics of faith exploring how faith works i told us that the according to scripture the equation is that it comes by grace and then it is true faith and we got to examine faith that bible faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word we did say that Bible faith is predicated upon two foundations. Number one, the integrity of God, that God is dependable. Number two, the ability of God. Please do not forget this. If it is Bible faith you want to manifest, it is predicated upon two factors. One, the integrity of God, that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together? and then that number two god has all power once have i spoken twice have you heard that all power belongs to god not god and satan not god and men it is exclusively that of god that every time men seem to walk in dominion that their dominion in this kingdom is shared dominion not absolute dominion we were made partakers it's not a life that we have on our own 
are we together and then we discussed a few things that would help us walk in faith so now we'll discuss the anointing i have by the privilege of god's grace i've had the honor of studying and teaching the subject of the power of god and the anointing for many years and you would think that after teaching this for so many years i would have exhausted everything to be known about the anointing and that is not true one of the ways you know that something comes from god is that 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 inability to exhaust the riches in it that is in god will also follow his thoughts and whatever it is that is of god you can never truly exhaust everything about the anointing about faith it is layer after layer when you are done with one layer god will honor you by unveiling another layer of that spiritual reality we need the anointing especially the times that we live in psalm 92 and verse 10 psalm 92 and verse 10 let's begin our teaching now please pay attention and then like we are already experiencing please be sensitive because every time you teach on the anointing the spirit of the living god has the assignment to bring confirmation to the things that are being taught so it is not unusual i know you know that by now when there are manifestations of the spirit while the word is coming you just focus on the word and make sure that you have understanding 92 verse 10 can we read together one to read but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and i shall be anointed with fresh oil i shall be anointed with fresh oil the bible tells us to look up to jesus so theologically speaking jesus is our pattern man he represents perfect theology that means jesus was approved of god to be the reference every believer who wants to attain unto stature and growth in the spirit the bible mandates that you look primarily you look unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith you understudy his life and the way that he lived and you can glean wisdom and follow that spiritual pathway to a life of excellence and a life of glory the bible talks about jesus who although was the word he came as the word incarnate through the womb of a young virgin called mary and the bible lets us know that at age 12 jesus was about the temple learning he said shouldn't you know that i should be about my father's business are we together by the time he's 30 we see jesus coming to jordan to be baptized of john who was a prophet we call him the baptist john baptizes jesus and he comes out of the water and the bible says the heavens were opened and he saw the holy spirit descending on jesus in the similitude of a dove and a voice spoke from heaven and said this is my beloved son are we bible students in whom i am well pleased he said hear ye him and then as we'll be reading later on the bible says the spirit of god immediately drove him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he was there fasting and praying 40 days and 40 nights and having you know triumph over the temptations of satan the bible records that he returned in the power of the spirit and there began the ministry of signs and wonders the ministry of the supernatural that would not end culminated even in his resurrection and his exaltation at the right hand of the father so he became for us a template and a pattern man to study the dynamics of walking in the anointing what is the anointing we talk a lot about the anointing preachers want to be anointed business people want to be anointed career people want to be anointed there is such an obsession for the anointing and there's nothing wrong with that we need to be anointed it is my considered opinion that the anointing oil serves more for impartation than even cooking in africa i think so i may be wrong but i think so that chances are excellent that if you see someone buying 
an anointing oil it, it hardly will be for the kitchen that's to tell you how much we believe in the anointing it's not mockery are you getting what i'm saying now i'm just showing you how determined we are to make sure the anointing is within our reach but it seems as though regardless all the oil that we have in our bottles and the ones we have through different mediums and right now sadly in africa we've invented a lot of things largely extra biblical um, strategies to bring the anointing but it is it's a sincere desire from for, for for god's people from god's people to bring the anointing within their reach somehow we have read through scripture and we have seen through the lives of a few people who seem to have been marvelously anointed by God. We have seen the possibilities that have come from their lives, be it in ministry, be it in business. When you see a man of God who is doing something very extraordinary and very supernatural, you most likely will say that man is heavily anointed. You may not say that man is full of faith. Subconsciously, we have connected the anointing to supernatural, extraordinary manifestations. Is that true? Yeah. Manifestations like healings, deliverances, you know, impartations of the spirit, supernatural prosperity, influence, anything that moves above and beyond the scope of science and may not seem to, to go through the normal law of process or the course of nature. Usually it attracts us and we credit that manifestation to the presence of the anointing. What then is the anointing? The anointing, um, the, the, the whole essence, please look up. I've taught it here and let me just repeat it for the sake of this series. The idea of being anointed from ancient times, the context is to be smeared with oil, but, but the, the idea of being anointed is to legitimize an operation. So when we say an individual is anointed, what we mean is that you have been authorized. To be anointed means to be authorized to do whatever you are doing. To be anointed means to be empowered to do whatever it is you are doing. Are we together? To anoint means to legitimize an operation so that both the earth and the realm of the spirit no longer considers you to do it illegally. So when the Bible talks about being anointed, it is an ordination. That really is the essence of ordination, to legitimize an operation. Are we together now? So... Um, in its purest form the anointing has nothing to do with oil you see most times and and now sadly when believers don't have the requisite spiritual knowledge and we get them into all these rituals of oil and the rest it turns into it almost becomes witchcraft sometimes all of those mediums only find their credence if and when the believer has an understanding of what he is doing to be anointed has nothing to do with oil necessarily to be anointed has nothing to do with a handkerchief a mantle some medium i'm not saying those things are wrong but the essence of being anointed is to empower you to do or to become and then to legitimize your operation are we together what is the anointing the anointing is god's ability please write it down you have to know the owner of that ability it matters to know that the ability belongs to god the anointing is not just ability the anointing is god's ability because there are many other kinds of abilities routed through there are there are abilities that seem to come from demons and come from wherever but god's ability at work in a human or material vessel please write it down the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results i'll take it again the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results 
so the ability belongs to god even whilst we take advantage of that ability god's ability at work in a human vessel or any material vessel and then the intent the goal of that anointing is to empower and to help that individual to accomplish god's purposes and then to produce extraordinary results a very fair definition of the anointing so immediately that tells you that that empowerment that legitimization comes from god and belongs to him now the challenge with many people is when it ha because of the the seeming autonomy and liberty that happens in the presence of the anointing you find out that people misuse the anointing because i can walk in the flesh i may want to make a name for myself right now and i can tell you there's someone here the power of god will come on and you will be shocked to see that it will happen but you will have to vet it from the lens of god's desire to know whether he was the one who directed that or it was just flesh are you seeing that now just because it happened did not necessarily mean it accomplished the purposes of god this is where the abuse of the anointing comes when i become a recipient of the anointing it is within my power to misuse it are we together and many sadly have misused the anointing for the gratification of the flesh many have misused the anointing for financial gains many have misused the anointing for all kinds of reasons so the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or a material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary or supernatural results i don't need to go into the subject of results we already settled that last week and i pray that by now you see that if your christian experience is barren of results jesus christ will never truly be glorified in your life i hope we're done with that i'm sure that we've settled that already that in our lives manifesting extraordinary results jesus is glorified and we the saints also are glorified john 17 and verse 1 the prayer of jesus he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said father the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so two people are being glorified here the son is glorified the father is glorified hallelujah it is very important to understand this subject of the anointing i have had the honor and the privilege of talking praying with so many ministers of the gospel through the years and most times because of the privilege of what god has done and continues to do in and through my life when i meet ministers usually the prayer all they want is an impartation of grace they will tell you sincerely apostle i'm not getting this result i'm not getting that result i don't know why it's like that i just need that engracing so subconsciously most people know that every time your life is barren of results in addition to the principles you may learn there has to be an engracing upon you to produce those possibilities i have said it and i will repeat myself here in koinonia please listen to me as a human being unassisted by any spiritual agency there is only so much you can do there is a certain degree of results there is a threshold of results and manifestation of possibilities that when you cross it tells men that you are no longer alone there has to be a spirit agency that is assisting you are we together whether in business whether in ministry it is impossible as a human being unassisted to produce certain dimensions of results it cannot happen this is very important now listen very carefully why do we need the anointing let's answer the question why this also tells you the the there are two primary assignments of the anointing and i want you to understand this they may not be the only ones but according to my study of scripture and even in my experience and the experience of so many who have 
been given unusual access to the anointing we learn that the anointing is useful in the life of the believer for two principal reasons number one the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom why do we need the anointing number one the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom so the first assignment of the anointing is to provide empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom is satan fighting your destiny and my destiny absolutely how long for as long as you will be alive are we together psalm 66 and verse 3 it has become an anthem in this ministry say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you is god's servant bishop david Oedeko who would say that the only language satan understands is the language of power and he's right satan does not understand english does not understand french satan does not understand negotiation the only thing he understands is power ask egypt um, israel in egypt nine plagues and satan through pharaoh would not let them go but one last plague and it compelled him to let them go so the anointing addresses satan now it's very very important for you to understand this you see satan is spirit satan is not flesh it is not only god who is spirit alone satan is also spirit do you know what that means you cannot arrest him number two you can't take him to a court number three the military cannot help you fight him number four you cannot set him on fire all the things you do to men to find peace you cannot do with him satan is spirit the angels the fallen angels and all the demons and the cohorts of hell they are spirits even though their damage is not spiritual alone their damage starts from the realm of the spirit but it has a physical expression in your life when the devil plants sickness in your body it can start from a dream but it will not end at a dream it will manifest physically and you will see the injury you will see the pain when satan programs disfavor upon a believer it can start from the realm of the spirit but you will shockingly see it manifest physically are we together so it takes the anointing to be able to subdue the forces of darkness let me tell you this do you know every time you stand before god's people please look up to make an altar call i want you to know that we are not the only ones who are seeing you angels are witnesses to that salvation that prayer demons are also witnesses from the day you declare the lordship of jesus christ an intentional line has been drawn between you and satan for the rest of your life whether you are alive except you die but provided you are alive satan is interested in you apostle who did i offend that's not the issue when you were saying jesus i love you you are a potential threat to the kingdom of darkness satan does not give you a chance to grow before he attacks you he knows what the life of god is and he knows what you received even though you don't know it you may you may trivialize what you received but satan understands the implication of being saved in fact satan does not even wait for you to be saved the moment you are born if you just if you are born and you appear just with a spirit he won't really bother you because you don't have the legitimate ground to function on the earth but the moment you manifest with this material body you are already a potential threat that's why you read in the bible satan killed children he didn't even give them a chance to grow are we learning why do we need the anointing 
so that we can have that empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom it was jesus that was speaking and he said right from the days of john the baptist he says the kingdom suffered violence and he said the violent will take it by force are we together the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness it is true when you leave satan unhindered he will kill everything he can kill he will steal everything he can steal he will destroy everything he can destroy john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy satan's tripartite signature the moment if you are unsure who is around verify it with these tripartite activities if satan comes he will never leave you the way he met you he must steal something if satan comes and passes you and you are alone except god helped you or intercession saved you or it's not him but if it is satan you know there are people called pick there are these boys that are experts in stealing they can lift their hands and still steal <laughs> praise god lead they can pass you with their hands lifted and yet something will still be missing and it's not diabolism how they and, praise the name of the lord so satan is like that he can pass through your finances he can pass through your marriage he can pass through the life of your children he can pass through your spiritual life he can pass through your destiny he can pass through a church he can pass through a ministry he can pass through the life of a man of god you know it is him because something must be stolen something must seem to die something must seem to be destroyed someone shout no way shout it again say no way because for some of you before now you've not seen the necessity for the anointing and satan keeps camping you around that mindset and say are you an apostle no are you a prophet no are you not just a businessman don't mind them he's cheating you let me just advise you right now especially because of these end times the condition for being anointed is that you are alive the moment you are alive just know that satan will come to you if he has not come the messengers are on their way but through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves let me prophesy to someone that any force that has refused to let you go in the name of jesus and by the power that raised christ from the dead it must give up on you finally please sit down hear me your business will not just grow uh -uh. your children will not just be responsible people the ministry will not just grow your political career will not just flourish there is a devil who is determined to make sure everything god in your life dies are we together it will tear your relationship between you and your wife tear your relationship between you and your children destroy your finances until he reduces you to ashes mess up your ministry until you become a testimony of pain and shame satan for you when he does it he will sign it like julius berger will build and write signed everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen what makes you believe satan will fold his arms and watch you promoted you think he does not know what your influence will do to the kingdom man of god what makes you believe that satan will sit down and allow you to continue to be a rising voice you think he does not know what your voice will do to your territory hmm. oh zechariah and elizabeth it's not about barrenness it's about john who will anoint jesus there are many battles today that many of you are fighting that has nothing to do with you it is because of something that will come out from you listen when you see satan fighting your family what is what is finance does he eat naira and copper and dollars 
he knows that with that empowerment you will send your son to a mission school and in that mission school one day a prophet or apostle will visit that school he will have an encounter and he will find his purpose and become a mighty man of God so he will make sure that school fees never enters your hand help that woman please I can tell you firsthand every time you see the devil around your life he's not there to advise you he's not there to counsel you he's there to steal to kill and to destroy help that lady please listen can i be honest with you i have seen many demon spirits in my life i'm not telling you what i just read in scripture if you ever see men excelling in spite of satan something is keeping him you don't want listen to me for thousands of years of satan as a defeated foe he has still not given up on fighting god you have to understand the person you are dealing with you will think after the millions of years of his rebellion he should just give up one day satan is as determined today as he was when he left heaven what kind of a creature is that even some of the capons some of the armed robbers some of the terrorists they got to a point where they were broken like children have you ever seen satan repenting have you ever seen his picture on his knees saying god just punish me but i'm ready for peace most people do not know the person they are dealing with if you think oppressing you for 30 years will make satan say it's enough think again apostle he has tied down my ministry for five years one day go better satan go and read your bible a man who was thrown from heaven and after millions of years he is still determined to towards the purposes of god is there is anything to learn from satan is determination can i tell you you were born in the middle of an old story that has nothing to do with you but simply because you found yourself in that space called the earth you better find out the rules of engagement otherwise you will find out that your life will become a casualty that you know nothing about i remember years ago a gentleman true story the moment he became 13 someone slapped him in his dream 13 years and when he came and met me and he was talking he's, you know a little boy was in one of the schools then in zaria and all of that and he came those times i used to just see them and he was telling me that somebody slapped him do you know true story when he was talking to his father the father said describe who slapped you and that was exactly what happened to the father i don't know if it was around that time but at least as a teenager you know what the spirit was saying welcome to a battle that your being part of this bloodline has forced you you must be interested in what we are dealing with are we together why do we need the anointing because there is a real devil there are real spirits mother the devil will not fold his arms and watch your five ten eight children rise up to become responsible people no his joy is to steal to kill and to destroy you would think if you start crying once satan will pity you find out who he is there are people crying in hell if he's to pity anybody he will start with them not you I don't know about you but for me i've made up my mind as a covenant with god i have no negotiation with satan there are no discussions every time me and he meet he already knows i'm saying this because some of you have allowed the devil lie to you you are a woman don't get into these spiritual things some of you you are a man some of you you are not a prayer warrior you don't let the devil keep deceiving you and destroy your life let me tell you this see when satan wants to destroy a family his first target is the strongest person spiritually 
I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. He is not stupid. He will afflict with sickness. He will afflict with pain. He will afflict with frustration. So that when you go down spiritually, that hindrance has cleared the way. He will now settle down and attack. Someone blasts in the spirit in one minute. Not my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Help those under the anointing. Skete pakatos kote katabaria, embre ketus ketisha nakatos yata. In Jesus' name, please sit down. Let me tell you something. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I will not go ahead of myself. There is a separate series on deliverance. That one we will announce it, and I will settle down and teach you. But can I tell you this? I don't mean to scare you, but Africa, listen to me. If you are a firstborn, listen to me. If you are a first male, listen to me. If you are a last child, listen to me. If you are a breadwinner, listen to me. If you are the one who lifts up the head of your family, listen to me. Satan, he attacks, but there is a protocol to the attack. So much ignorance in the body of Christ. listen please look up look up i want you to pay attention don't you think i'm wasting your time if you are the first to be educated the first for your head to be lifted in your family the first go and read the bible about the laws firstborns not just the first to come out of the womb the first to do anything in life do you know why because the first of anything is the seed and the pattern The first to open a door for a family is the first to create the pattern the first to break out of poverty you think the devil will fold his arms and watch you the first man of god from your village the first man of god from your family the first professor the first married man the first married woman Praise God. Please sit down. Let me try to organize myself this night. Just help those under the anointing. I tell you, God is doing many things as I'm speaking. You came to church. This is Koinonia. No waste of your time at all. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me let me tell you one of the ways that satan moves is called the power of patterns you know what patterns are patterns are repetitive occurrences you find out god forbid don't feel bad your grandmother was raped your mother was raped your daughter was raped they never shared it with themselves yet the pattern will find itself again somebody spent 10 years in america return back to nigeria like an arm robber another person spent 10 years in us or in in in, in, in um, london return back all those things are patterns let me tell you what patterns are patterns are sponsored by altars even if the initiators of the altars go the altars are still valid they will speak that is the reason why you see nations go through patterns regions go through patterns individuals go through patterns families go through patterns even ministries go through patterns 
the anointing is not for preachers not the end time anointing the anointing is not just for men of god the anointing is not just for adults help that person please i have seen wickedness in the lives of people i have seen satan dis destabilize the joy and the peace of families i've seen great men of god with potentials to do things for the kingdom but satan just brought them down i've seen business people who would have been the crown of their regions can i tell you the truth believe me when i tell you satan is not a friend learn from his rebellion and his unbendedness satan has never told god sorry he will never tell man sorry just believe that about him so when satan comes around your life and acts like a friend beware of what you are playing with you are not just playing with fire satan is every other thing but he's not stupid and he's not foolish he has an advantage of age and he's using it well please sit down why do we need the anointing to empower the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom mm. number two why do we need the anointing the second reason why we need the anointing is so that we can tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities why do we need the anointing to empower us to tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities results and possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of humans in ministry in business in politics you think daniel became an extraordinary politician in a harsh climate just because he could speak good english no even the people consulted through divination and they found out that the spirit of god they called it the gods was upon him they knew that this man was not ordinary and through the dispensation of three or four kings he still remained on top why do we need the anointing to empower us to manifest dimensions of supernatural possibilities i made up my mind as a person and as a man of god that i will never be ordinary that my life and everything about it will be extraordinary always not just because i want a name for myself not at all because i have found out that when you follow the natural course of things time will cheat you men will cheat you systems will cheat you you need to have an advantage that is beyond the natural course are we together it's good to follow the laws of prosperity i have taught you but following only the natural laws of prosperity save johnny you will see when god will bless you or you will see when you'll be empowered in this wicked and evil world when you are one lord to break through an evil man will reverse you back to start again more than compliance with the laws they are there and they are important i've taught you but there has to be an engracing that can pick you on the wings of the spirit remember that the unit of destiny is time that's why god brought possibilities like speed like restoration these are forces that insist and ensure that you live a victorious life are we learning now in acts chapter 7 and verse 22 let's look at two scriptures very quickly acts chapter 7 and verse 22 media please help us the bible says and moses was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds look at such a man do you know what that meant even though he was not an egyptian he did not have the history 
there was a supernatural engracing upon him he learned the wisdom of the egyptians he was mighty both in words and in deed they were preparing moses already the level of excellence from his life he was inevitably going to be the next pharaoh that's why when he returned you see as at the time moses returned back to egypt the pharaoh he left had died it was his son Ramesses who was his friend that was why when Moses looked at him and said Pharaoh I'm sure Ramesses will look at him and say dear brother good to see you after over 40 years the only difference is that you have returned back stupid you were wiser when you left you forgotten that this is Egypt you come and stand looking like a fugitive with a staff and tell me some deity you met in the forest said I should come and release these people who have been in captivity for 430 years Moses you have the wisdom of the Egyptians and he said all right I'm not here for a long story let the rods I told you that they are also preachers I finished my preaching let the rod start his own sermon and when he threw the rod it became a serpent I can imagine Pharaoh laughing and saying you still remember and he called Janus and Jembes the wizards of Egypt and they came and made caricature of the rod of Moses. They threw Pharaoh's rod. It also became a serpent. And God used that. Most of you have not discerned the sermon of the rods. Those rods preached a message that you need to understand. You have heard the sermon of men, but understand the sermon of the rods. Do you know what happened? The rod that became a serpent ate that of the man and did not increase in size. And he picked it up. That is a sermon. Dominion over time and matter is real dominion. God was saying something there. Oh, but I'm not impressed enough. And then one plague after another. You can see that Pharaoh was not a normal human being. You can see the Luciferian manifestation. This is why some of you need to pray for your children. You flog them, they come back and see misbehave. They come out of jail. They come out of the prison cell. Will you do it again? No. Two days, they are back again. It's not normal. That determination is not a human determination. It came from, it's an antichrist spirit empowering people like that. There are people when they are going back to prison, they don't even ask them any question. They just say, just pass, go back. Just go register your name, change your clothes and go in there. Can I tell you this? Creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. The sons of God are not here to repeat science. Science is an advantage. But believe me, God didn't take us this far to just come and be scientific. I, I, I guarantee you, it doesn't take fasting to be scientific. It doesn't take Bible study to be scientific. What we are manifesting is higher than science. He did not just bring us to, to just do sociology or to do all of... No, 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 no. There will be a spectacular display before Jesus Christ comes. The manifestation of a godlike dimension of power and grace in and through the saints. It has been written so that it will not be changed. The Bible. We will begin to see people manifest dimensions. Of intelligence I do I say this I like to study a lot about the world and all of that I like to study about UFOs aliens for some reason I find those things interesting since I don't watch movies and all of that I now focus on those things and I read some of the ancient science that you know they tell us we are not alone you know there are all kinds of people around the world these ones these species of people and then I just read up all those things and in my mind, I said, no wonder human beings behave the way they behave. There is a minimal level of wickedness that a normal human being should have. When your wickedness stretches beyond that border, it's not you again. It's you and another spirit. Is that true? No matter how wicked men are, there is a limit. When your wickedness stretches beyond a certain threshold, you are empowered by a spirit. The same way, human beings cannot love and be kind beyond a certain threshold when you move past that threshold you are not alone too 
there has to be a spirit empowering you we need to be supernatural people you see our world today and i don't mean to cause trouble across the body of christ but we have to be careful there is a gradual exaltation of philosophies and science above the supernatural why because a lot of people just believe that societies and territories have been changed through their reception of science we're not against that but let me tell you sincerely this faith work that we are part of it came by a supernatural means it is sustained by a supernatural means find out how we are going to leave the earth it's not scientific what is the skyscraper that will take us to heaven with one last that blast of the trumpet those who are dead in christ will rise explain the name of the scientific process that gives them new bodies immediately what is it called explain the name of the scientific process that suddenly draws gravity and we who are alive and shouting the name of jesus will be on our way going and those who are laughing at us will wave them and say i told you i gave you a chance explain the name of that scientific process am i against science not at all but let us be careful because the flesh realm including science is satan's domain he does not want you to rise or see reality beyond the three-dimensional plane because provided you are under the influence of the three-dimensional realm you are in satan's domain he can manipulate systems and structures he can play around with your mind and destroy your destiny but when you rise to that realm and that plane your life becomes extraordinary we have so many doctors in this ministry there are many professionals it is not unusual that if someone is sick the natural course is to administer a treatment and that is wonderful but what if the doctor is not there and that person may not have the chance to see the doctor is there a possibility of administering something powerful who taught the doctor that you can stand before a tree and pick a leaf and process it in a lab and it becomes an injection and you put it in someone even the doctors depend on the supernatural for treatment the injection does not get to your heart when they put that injection wherever it enters your body they leave the rest do you not know that every other thing that happens is a miracle i read a bit about the human body and i'm surprised at the many activities that happen in the human body do you know when a human being is sleeping science tells us and medicine tells us do you know how many activities in your body shut down just because you are sleeping that means if as you are awake looking at me now you may think it's just your heart and maybe your brain that is working think again if you know the, the it's almost like a riot in your body all the things the cells working if you don't understand they repeat it again this body is as busy as anything and yet there is an invisible hand that keeps it every time i'm in the air i think about a lot of things if i'm not sleeping and one of the things i think about is the miracle of a material body that was created from metals runs and then lifts and now we are above the clouds and we are under the mercy of the creator I'm not, I'm not talking about the dexterity of the plane moving i'm saying literally for 50 minutes or five hours or whatever hours you are under the mercy of the creator do you know that if that plane goes down there is no amount of you, you can see the limitation flying helps me to know where science ends the moment they lift sciences have tried whatever you believe let it continue with you when you are coming down come down to my realm I will pick it up from where I'm limited and land you safely and the plane is moving 
and I'm sure that God watches in heaven and he's just saying oh dear these people do not even know who is flying them it's not like they met him to verify whether he's drunk whether he's all right whether he fought with his wife whether he's under a psychological problem you just know that the owner of the plane gave the man the, the, the access and you now had your confidence to sit down there why wouldn't I trust God listen I travel a lot and if I can place my destiny in the hands of an airline God bless them a number of them are my people I God bless you I'm not I'm not speaking against them literally when we are flying in the night I don't know where we are I don't know where we, we believe everything they tell us And yet these are human beings that can make mistakes nobody ever says verify that we are we are you know how are you sure we are safe and yet the creator of the ends of the earth when he now beckons that we trust him we bring all kinds of flimsy reasons and say god before i take this step prove to me yet we jump into the plane and sit down quietly i'm using flight because almost everybody here or many of us here are maybe frequent flyers in some way just see what you do every day and every time what of the driver that drives you you've been hearing that they are kidnapping yet you are still going to travel tomorrow you would think that will make you afraid you will still go and come back The longest sea journey I've had was one hour, 20 minutes or so. I made up my mind that I won't repeat that again. 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 Not from the riverine area. I've made my contribution as far as my experience is concerned. My goodness. Let me tell you when you are... And, and these are military people carrying me. They are not amateurs. I just said, Lord, well, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. If I die, the only thing is that I didn't finish my assignment, but at least. Are we blessed? We need to tap into supernatural dimensions of the power of God. Everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. I repeat, everything that is natural has a supernatural expression when you go to the market and you meet a trader you say i want to buy a wrapper they will ask you original or um what's the other, or original or maybe imitation depending on whatever money you have there is one that looks like it but it's not it there is one that is really it everything that is natural is like that imitation there is an original the Bible says everything that appears, Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 and 3, that it came from a realm that is unseen. Hear me. There is a natural cause of prosperity, but there is supernatural prosperity. There is a natural medical cause of healing, but there is supernatural healing. There is a natural cause for growth, but there is supernatural growth. The choice is yours. They both have their consequences. If you choose to live a natural life, there are many, many, many things that you will be limited. You will not be able to do many things. But you can choose to command the supernatural even in your life. Are we blessed? So the supernatural grants you empowerment to subdue the forces fighting against your destiny and against kingdom advance. And then it empowers you to rise to a dimension where you command supernatural possibilities luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 6 luke chapter 1 very quickly please luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 36 need to run through a few things very quickly so we'll pray luke chapter 1 from verse 30 now this is mary and the angel said unto her mary now fear not mary for thou hast found favor with god and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb 
and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus we're reading to 36 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end now Mary said to the angel how shall these things be seeing I know not a man you know what Mary is saying Mary is saying listen I it would have been believable if there is a process a natural cause of how things should be from a biological angle but there is a deficiency here how will it happen because I didn't hear you mention a man it is possible that God will speak to you and the natural formula for that result you will not mention it don't forget that it is God who is speaking are we together yes the natural course was to wait for the angel to steer the water and whoever jumps in first but when Jesus came Jesus would have said I empower you with wisdom and the prophetic to know when an angel is going to come so that you will jump before the rest Jesus said listen I don't negate the rule but I can change it because I am God ah. if you prosper in one year naturally chances are excellent that you may be a thief or a fraudster you know all these kinds of things because you should be able to build with dignity and honor are we are we are we together now but God can come to you and say because of the cry of your mother and the burden of 10 of your siblings allowing you to go through the natural course of life investing slowly gradually receiving 10 percent every year until you are 10 years by the time that will happen your your parents would have gone and you may not have the opportunity for that prophetic word i gave them so there is something i'm going to do in your life that in one year now when it happens you will not go around telling people don't follow the natural course of growth that would be erroneous but you will know that your life was an exemption are we together and the hand of the lord came upon elijah when you want to go from one place to the other if you have a boat or a camel or a donkey you use it but in this case the hand of the lord came upon elijah and another rule was created to him do you know why i'm telling you this keep learning the laws of the kingdom keep learning the laws of life but don't be surprised when an invisible hand picks you and moves you beyond the natural sequence of things i believe this i believe in diligence i will always teach diligence are we together but like I would always share, there are times that your boat is fine. There are times your fishing net is fine, oh Peter. There are times you are in the sea, but you will still not catch fish. That is not an issue of laziness. The fish didn't come. It's no longer your fault. At that point, you don't need skills again. You need the one who created the fish to gravitate them towards you and say, cast your net to its right side. And in a moment, you will catch fish that your boat will begin to sink. hallelujah it is natural for you to start a business and then look for customers build a clientele gradually through integrity trustworthiness and after five years you would have gained experience made your mistakes failed cried prayed on God sown seeds and then you stabilize but God can decide in one year somebody can call you and mentor you and say you will be the African distributor of this product just like that and you are putting your hand on your head is it not in your bible that when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream what kind of miracle will make unbelievers join in the testimony hear me believers let us maintain the natural course of things based on the laws of life i am not teaching you to ignore the laws of life but woe betides anybody who laughs at the possibility of a dimension higher than science higher than sociology this is my problem with intelligent people and secular humanists they negate the fact that there is a god in heaven and there is a possibility to tap into that infinite power go to the village and they will tell you there is a natural cause there is a way you can plant crops 
and everything will grow but there is a way you can have an accelerated harvest do you want it when you say yes they will not say go and stand in the farm they will say go and meet a man there is something he will give you there is a natural cause of politics you can vote you can campaign you can talk to people they can help you you can grow you can build but there is, we have seen it in this nation where god picked people you know this one it was god that lifted them hallelujah i heard of somebody true story who bought a property it was worth some millions of naira this guy brought a, pro a property it was not up to two weeks there was a company that wanted that property but they were going through a protocol to meet the owner and quickly some money came for that guy and he bought that property from the former owner and they suddenly called him that there is a company that want to buy it it was almost 10 times the amount this boy stood in shock they were desperate for that land the owner that sold it to him wanted to make trouble and say return he said no 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 we finish our transaction this is between me and these people i, I mean it i'm not exactly if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking that was how this guy's life changed overnight many people suspected him of fraud he said i'm not i'm not a fraudster it was just the favor of god now the balance in church is that because of teachings like this many believers become irresponsible you see that they negate the natural cause of things and they say since there is favor since there is speed why should i be diligent why should i build on relationships i'm not teaching you to ignore these laws but i'm teaching you that in addition let it be at the back of your mind you can produce posters as a man of god you can produce handbills billboards you can invite people do evangelism but you know like i know that there is a limit you can do the best that you can do and someone can just frown and say pastors who eat people's money wicked people that's the comment they will give but there is a grace that can come upon you and can compel all and sundry to come and see what jesus is doing this one is not charm this one is not um, whatever it is it is the hand of god find out what was on jesus that made five thousand people to climb a mountain with him and stay there must i climb a mountain to hear him is someone learning now please let me have your attention do you know why i'm happy for you because what is coming on you this night you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen in your life everything you have seen natural believe me when i tell you you are about to experience the extraordinary dimension of the same thing and i hope you believe what i'm saying please sit down let me give you very quickly three keys or yeah three keys and then very quickly we'll discuss how to receive the anointing and then we'll pray pay attention now in zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 let's rush zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 it says then he answered and spake unto me saying to zerubbabel now this is the word of the lord unto zerubbabel and it applies to us he said not by might nor by power human power now and strength but by my spirit saith the lord there are certain results that happens by the spirit and by the power of the holy spirit micah chapter 3 and verse 8 micah chapter 3 and verse 8 micah chapter 3 and verse 8 everyone please read the first sentence will end at lord ready one to read but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord truly i am full of power to do ministry i am full of power to do business i am full of power for governance and politics i am full of power as a prayer warrior power as a prophet power as an apostle power as a kingdom financier truly i am full of power the anointing of the holy spirit 
truly i am full of power luke chapter 4 please let's just go to verse 14 for sake of time maybe 13 and 14 this was a temptation of jesus christ and the bible says and when the devil had ended all the temptation he departed from him for a season read 14 with me if you desire this ready one to read and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went about a fame of him through all the region round about it takes power to gain visibility you can be sincere you can have a message but it takes power for your generation to hear you many of us still it is this empowerment part remember i've taught you that the greatest need of an unsaved person the greatest need of an unbeliever is what salvation the greatest need of a saved believer is transformation and that's through the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word but the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment for many of us i give it to you that you have experienced a dimension of commendable transformation but you need the grace to defend the things you know in this kingdom we not only hear we hear and see is that true Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them the Bible says verse 6 the Bible says and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing in this kingdom we don't hear alone God can lift God can bless God can change stories we need to see you both hear and see for some of you people have only heard of what God can do through you in this season they will begin to see it very quickly I'm not going to explain it I'll just give it out very quickly because there's something I want us to press on there are four keys four keys that are responsible for spiritual empowerment you want to encounter the anointing there are four keys four demands and then I will now teach you how to receive are you ready number one consecration and intimacy with God the first requirement if it is genuine power you want the power of consecration and intimacy with God first John chapter 2 please from verse 15 please hurry up hurry up first John love not the world neither the things that are in the world can you imagine that to receive the power that gives you everything you need to lose the passion for everything that is in the world love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world now look at this kind of look at this thing now it says love not the world is the word eros many theologians and many people have mistaken this to mean don't love prosperity don't love increase that's not what the bible is teaching the word love is the word eros that means an ungodly affinity an attachment towards things that takes the place of christ in your life are you getting the point now god is not against us prospering god is not against us having influence what he's against is exalting those things and having an obsession that it dethrones christ in your life any kind of money that jesus must be dethroned for you to have it is useless any kind of lifting that jesus must be dethroned for you to have it is useless anything god gives satan will try to give it to you too but the condition is bow down and worship me that was what he brought to jesus the three hebrew boys remember satan is obsessed with worship transgenerational allegiance do you know the reason why god cannot trust many people with his anointing 
is because they are not set apart to look beyond themselves and to see Jesus lifted. I think it was in Lagos or so I was teaching, was it yesterday now or day before yesterday? And I was telling them, I said, you know, not every closed door is demonic. There are certain doors is God that closed it by himself as an act of his mercy because he has weighed you and found out that if that door is opened, the, the existence of the flesh within you, there are people no matter how they fast and pray for the prophetic, they will not receive that grace. Do you know why? Because if you actually receive the creative dimension of the prophetic in anger, you will cause and kill people because you are angry you will kill more dead bodies you will be cooperating with satan because of anger so god will rather withdraw it until that intimacy with the holy spirit and that transformation is there there are many people including preachers there are certain anointings if god gives you today you will not pray again why will you pray when people will travel from several nations and will pay everything to come and meet the great man of god apostle joshua selman what do you need prayer for again? What do you need fasting for again? Can I tell you this? If it is the anointing you want to receive, it's more than your money. You can drop your seed and God says, nonsense, carry your money and go away. It is your heart I'm looking for. Prayer and fasting is important. But let me tell you, before your prayer and fasting will make sense and have value in the spirit, your heart condition must be right the desire and the desperation to see jesus revealed and glorified in your life do you know you always hear me give this example imagine that god opens your eyes to the prophetic and a millionaire or a billionaire billionaires are all over your church or your ministry you literally can look at them and god opens your eyes and you see what they have in their account you've already bought sharp sand to build your house and you are limited there's there's no money you've calculated everything your engineer has told you 300 million will build a solid structure for you and the people trust you that's when you will know whether you are saved or not because one spectacular prophetic word and see human beings when they trust you they become vulnerable to you sincerely you can tell someone look you have one billion two hundred and fifty thousand ah yes that's true oh yeah the other part i won't touch the one billion but that other slice give on to caesar what you, know, you can twist anything and just because you are talking and the person is falling while you are talking does not mean it is god that is behind it you see i told you that you can misuse the anointing there is a level of charismatism that the anointing brings. There is an aura. It's a fragrance. It can attract everything to you. That is the reason why people have to be dead to self. Are we together? Consecration and intimacy. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. This has become an anthem in my life and I'm praying that someone will finally get that revelation. Please look up. My son, give me mine. Give me thine many people are giving god offerings many people are giving god pulpit god does not want your pulpit he's not looking for your offering your tithe all of those things are secondary let me tell you sincerely if you want power with god koinonia hear me what god wants is your heart i can tell you by the authority of scripture by the privilege of learning from the fathers and by my own experience if you are genuinely anointed genuinely anointed of god there is almost a godlike worship that people can bring around you because of the all surpassing manifestation of the excellency of god in your life even you sometimes you will look at yourself and say my god who am i i know what the anointing can do believe me and if you are not broken before god and especially our generation of ministers small grace here small anointing and that's it you see people misbehaving all around with the anointing small prophetic small apostolic and all kinds of things and god just withdraws the more he wants to give you because when god tests you with it 
you are rude you are lawless you are indisciplined you are you are you are rebellious you don't have any regard for authority god says no this little we've given this guy let's leave it there if we multiply this anointing you will kill everybody it means people will start kneeling down lick your shoe worship you call you king of kings then they will receive healing and go another person will do that kind of thing go and read the stories of people i'm not being sarcastic who did not allow god to walk on their hearts preachers let me encourage you co-laborers in the gospel let's be careful how we impart graces on people just because people are committed and their hearts are open does not mean they are prepared let god vet them so that you do not anoint people who will be a casualty to you and others history has taught us a lesson anointing people unprepared will always lead to casualty we are all students in the school of the spirit don't get me wrong it's like carrying your car and giving your 12 or 13 year old child the way children are brilliant now one can even drive with his eyes closed children are have mastered the art of surprising everybody But the chances are excellent that that child he will most likely be the only one with that car among his contemporaries and his pride not incompetence that will kill that child do you know what it means to carry the grace that grants you access to the destinies the loyalty the finances of people it was a father in the lord baba adeboe who made a statement one time and he said by the grace of god if he needs a shirt today by the privilege of the influence God has given him he can make one statement and say brethren I need a shirt and he said literally without exaggeration his size can finish in the market because everyone will want to go and do you know what it means to have that level of influence don't tell me I will be fine are you seeing why God works on our hearts you can speak to someone and say in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord lift you and in two weeks he comes back he has become a billionaire and the person comes to you as a billionaire and say man of God I'm still your boy oh good news to the ear of a preacher a billionaire is your boy are you learning tonight while you are laughing please make sure you understand what I'm saying God demands death to the flesh if you must carry genuine power Billionaire is your boy and can say sir it looks like you are not happy is there any problem what can I do for you and Satan comes to say what
Habakkuk chapter 3. So we come and then go to Habakkuk chapter 3. We start from verse 3 and 4. God came from Tema, and the Holy One from Mankara. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of His praise. Verse 4. I wish we would have verse 4 and then we find one. Otherwise, we would He says, and His brightness was as the light. He says, grace streamed from His hand, and there, in that sunlight splendor, was the
a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither shall, neither after thee shall any rise like unto thee. Last verse. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. Both riches. How do you give riches? Did he give you money? So what exactly is riches? All is in that he will give you riches.
dimensions that are not yet there. Lay thy hands upon him. 19. And set him before Elias and the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. Verse 20. And thou shalt put some of your honor. You see that honor is a grace. It is transferable. Put some of your honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of Israel might be with you. If that grace is not on you as a leader,
Let a man so account of us. Stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Cry unto God. There are ministers who might be watching. There are business people. There are politicians. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I knew that I had an apostolic.
dimensions in business dimensions in governance show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus please pray please pray show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus i want to pray for you now that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet I want to pray for you and I want you to believe what is coming upon you you will command the supernatural as many as we are here so are our needs and every dimension requires a grace therefore I stand by the privilege of this election of grace, I stretch my hands from the north to the south. Barash Kadia. I'm telling you, I'm just in fire. This is what I'm saying. At the count of three, the unction required for the next season of your life. In the name of Jesus, help them please. At the count of three, like fire from heaven, it will come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that up the please, my God. Take that grace now. Take that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Take that grace now. Help that woman, please. Take that grace now. Superior anointings. Man of God, woman of God, I call for the apostolic. I call for the prophetic. I call for the evangelistic. Receive that grace. Take that unction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those in business. That grace of an entrepreneur. The grace that can subdue systems and structures and give you visibility. May that anointing rest upon you now. May that anointing rest upon you now. The anointing that brings speed into the life of a man acceleration is a possibility in this kingdom therefore i stretch my hands may that mantle rest upon you now speed in destiny speed in your life help that woman please speed in your life There is an anointing for influence and visibility. You can do all you can and your generation will not know you are there. But there is an unction that can come upon you and cause your voice to be heard. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. And for those who are following and connecting by faith. For some of you, this anointing, you will literally feel something physically coming on you as I'm praying. In the name of Abata Sakataba, the grace of visibility, right now, right now, may that unction come upon you. May that unction come back to Toskatia, and break the Toskatia, may that grace come upon you. Let me pray for everyone here who is part of this spiritual family and you are into politics and governance. The grace that enthrones in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, may that unction rest upon you.
upon you right now marvelous be rest upon you right now hear me when it has to do with wealth and abundance there are principles of productivity money exchange increase relationships negotiations and all these are valid financial principles but there is a prophetic dimension to wealth there is wealth that comes from heaven he said by this time because for many people and many families, this is an area of engracing. Things have been tied in your life. I want you to believe it. Don't let the devil tell you that there is no prophetic dimension to wealth. And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. I pray for you. Everyone who is in Egypt financially, hear the word of the Lord. I prophesy to you, come out now! Come out now! Come out now! The eyes that has refused to see you and favor you, I open that eyes to see you. Whoever is responsible for partnership with the Holy Ghost for your rising by reason of this function, I declare your rising is confirmed now.
name of Jesus Christ. Hear me? For some of you, I prophesy to you, between now and Sunday, I stand by the God of heaven and I decree and declare, every day of this week will open you up to a new chapter of strange manifestation. Hear me? By reason of this grace you carry, there are battles you will not need to fight. The jealousy of God will arise and fight it for you. Where your father could not cross, where your mother could not cross, hear me? What limited your father? What limited your mother? What limited those who have gone ahead of you? I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I scatter it before you right now. I scatter it before you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody who has forgotten you because there were demonic manipulations that took you away from their memory. They promise they will be there and help you. But as it is right now, you will pass them and it's as if they are not seeing you. Go back with this unction this night and watch the wonder working power of Jesus.
celebrate them as they come. Run to Jesus. Let tonight be the beginning of a new season. Two. His ways are superior. Some of you are coming out for the sake of your destiny. In your salvation is the salvation of your family members. In your salvation is the salvation of your loved ones. Are you coming? Please rush. Three. Okay, I'm told if you can, if you are not yet out, you can come with your bags and your Bibles. But if you are out, please, those who are close to them, protect your valuables so that you don't have people picking their things. Are you still coming? Apostle, I think I'm saved, but I'm not really sure. Join them quickly. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Young and old, everyone, please come.
Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.